Hello young people, eyes here, mouths closed. We have a lot to do today. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about open-ended questions, which is going to help you with both your activity for my class and the activity for your global project. So let's talk first about the difference between open-ended questions and closed-ended questions. Closed-ended questions are typically questions that could be answered with a simple yes or no, or one-word answers, short answers that don't require a lot of thought. Typically, with a closed-ended question, there's only one correct answer, which means that you can't really debate the question or argue anything about it. Open-ended questions are questions which require more thought than a simple one-word answer. A lot of times, these are questions that can be debated. They require more thought to answer. They require longer answers. A lot of times, an open-ended question is one that would have to be supported with evidence or references to some sort of idea or text. Uh, the difference between closed and open-ended questions typically is that closed-ended questions can be much simpler to answer, much shorter to answer. Open-ended questions require a lot more thought to them and a lot more explanation. So let's look at some examples, closed-ended questions. Is math your favorite subject? You'd answer that question with yes, it is, or no, it's not. It doesn't require a whole lot of thought or explanation behind it. Did you pass composition? Yes, I did because I got a 75. No, I did not. I had a 60. Are you at home? You can either be at home or not at home. It's a yes or no question. This is different than our open-ended questions, which require a lot more thought and some more explanation. What was your high school experience like? To answer that question, you have to go into some of the details of what that experience was like. You have to be able to describe it, talk about specific examples of, of experiences that you had, that would contribute to that answer. Many of you answered the second question for your spring break project. How does climate change impact our lives? And answering that question, you couldn't just say, yes, it does, or no, it doesn't. Because of this word, how, that makes you describe the different ways that it impacts our lives. A lot of times to answer that question, like many of you did, you had to use evidence from some of your other classes. To what degree were sophomores prepared for the Regents exams? You could answer this in many different ways. They were very prepared, as I'm sure most of you would have been if there were Regents. We were not prepared. I was sort of prepared. I was marginally prepared. I could have been more prepared. I was absolutely prepared. Lots of different answers that you could go with there, and you could also support it with whatever reasons you had. I was very prepared for my Regents because I had excellent teachers. I was not prepared for my Regents because I didn't do my classwork during the year. Open-ended questions require a little bit more explanation. A lot of times, but not all of the time, we can tell what type of question it is based on how it starts. If a question starts with when or does or the word is, oftentimes it's a closed question. There's only one answer or that is a yes or no answer. Does the restaurant still deliver food? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. The word what can be a little bit tricky. Depending on how it's used, it could be closed or open-ended. What time is lunch served? It's served at 12. What is the color of the sky? It is blue. However, if we look at open-ended questions, that can change if you ask what if. What if the government were to say that all schools were open again. Well, the answer to that question would be a lot more dependent on your response and the support for that response. Open-ended questions, typically my favorite ones, look at starters with this. To what extent or to what degree? Because then when you're forming that question, you have to ask somebody to really specify how much of something is done. And when you specify how much of something is done, you have to then support that, right? To what extent uh, did Italian food contribute to American culture? Well, you could say it did a lot or a little. You have to explain your answer there. I wonder why. When you ask a question that says, I wonder why, or make a statement that says, I wonder why this thing happened, the answer then has to talk about many different ways that that thing happened. How come or why questions? These are questions that make people explain themselves in their response. All really good ways to start a question if you want an answer that requires some more detail. So when we create open-ended question, there are three things that we need to do. First, you want to identify what is it you want to know. A lot of times this is the topic of the question. Once you have that topic done, you use a question starter that allows you for to open up discussion. So we would go back here, look down at our open-ended questions, maybe pick one of these question starters. 
And then finally, you finish the question by focusing on the topic that you selected. So let's look at how this works. If I'm identifying what it is I want to know, well, I want to know the impact of climate change on people's lives. So let's start with a question starter that allows for discussion. How does or to what degree? Two of my favorite open-ended questions. You'll see that I ask a lot of these when we're in class. How does this work? To what degree is this the case? Finally, we finish that question by focusing on the topic. How does, we'll use our how does question starter, how does climate change impact people's lives? Again, this goes right back to the topic. To what degree does climate change impact people's lives? These questions can't be answered with a simple yes or no, right? If I ask how does climate change impact people's lives, you can't just say yes, it does. You have to say yes, it impacts their lives in the sense that farming measures uh, become different or that it makes the summers more hot or that they may start focusing on renewable energy resources, whatever the answer may be. But you have to go into more detail to answer an open-ended question like this. For your global project, let's take a look real quick at slide number 11. This is slide number 11 for the global project, and it asks you to create a list of five open-ended questions that you have about genocide. Now, these can be any questions that you have about the topic genocide, but that is our topic. So for that topic, you need to write five open-ended questions. Again, these are open-ended questions, so they should not be questions that are able to be answered with a simple yes or no. Is genocide good? That's not a, that's a close-ended question. There's a very simple answer to that. Obviously, no, genocide is not good. They should be required, these questions that you ask, should require some more detail to the answers so that they can be argued. If you're not sure if one of these five questions is a question that is open-ended, try to answer it yourself. If you can answer that question that you created with a simple one-word answer or a yes or no, then it's a close-ended question and you have to amend that or edit it. If it requires a more detailed response, some more thought, or it can be debated, then it's probably an open-ended question, and you're off to the right start. One way to think about this is to think back to the work we did when we looked at thesis statements. I told you that thesis statements have to be debatable and specific. Oftentimes, this is because thesis statements respond to open-ended questions. So, if your question can be answered with a solid thesis statement, a debatable, detailed, specific thesis statement, then it's probably an open-ended question. That's a good spot to check to see if you're off on the right path. So selecting essential questions is the next step. When we look back here, slide 12 asks you to look at an essential question. Now, Ms. Flanagan provided some good essential questions here, but you might want to take one that is a little bit more personal or your own work, right? Essential questions are open-ended questions. They're debatable, they're broad, they're complex. All of these have to deal with open-ended questions. What makes something an essential question, which takes it a step further, is that it is dealing with a major issue and is oftentimes something that is at the heart of an issue. So if we look at the open-ended questions here, what makes something a genocide? Well, that looks at the essential ideas that are behind an event being a genocide. It's right at the heart of that issue. What is the role of an individual within larger genocide? Again, we're looking at the role of human beings, of individuals, at a genocide. The topic is genocide, but what are the questions that are really at the center of that? Examples of other essential questions, not about genocide. What makes a great story? If the topic's a story and we're looking at that, we have to figure out, okay, well, what makes a great story? Maybe it's having really great characters. Maybe it's really great plot, dialogue. The answer can be debatable, but the question goes at the heart of what makes a great story. A historical question, why is it important to learn from the past? Well, there's a lot of different answers you can give there, which makes it open-ended. But to make it an essential question, that's really a question that you have to ask when you're dealing with historical issues. right? You can't really look at a historical issue without that essential question. It is essential to studying the topic. How do individuals develop values and beliefs? A lot of philosophical questions, philosophy classes, deal with this as the essential question to that class. You can't really answer any of the topics in that class without looking at that. So today what we're going to do is you are going to complete this worksheet for my class. The worksheet looks at 
essential questions and open-ended questions. Open-ended questions. I've given you here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 questions on the first side of the sheet. I want you to look at all of these questions and simply tell me, is it open-ended or close-ended? And write your answer in the blank. Then I've given you one, two, three, four, five topics. Great literature, historical inventions, religions and or beliefs, conflict and or change, and music. I want you to take that topic and write an open-ended question for the topic. Write one open-ended question for each of the topics. If you can push yourself a little bit further and turn those into essential questions, even better. Once you have that done, then go back to your work with the global project and go ahead and take that on. That's your project for today. Good luck.